This project involves working with high voltages. Intentional misuse of voltages like these could cause injury or death. Do not try this at home. Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com. Recently, we've been having a rash of techno groupies hanging around outside of Hackaday headquarters. Somehow, our location got out, and ever since, we've had a bunch of people milling about. We've decided to do something about this. Here to show me what we've come up with is Hackaday, uh, Hackaday headquarters head of security, Vlad. Hey, Vlad, how you doing? Yeah. All right then. Uh, so Vlad, why don't you show show the audience what you're wearing here today? This is the the Hackaday stun glove, and uh, Vlad's very fond of this. He uh, he came up with this, and uh, I'll just show you the the parts of what we have here. This this is a rubberized glove. Uh, this is to protect your hand from any sort of uh, electrical current coming through it. Here we have what I originally thought were called metal studs, but uh, I was a little bit worried about searching that on the internet, but uh, eventually I found out that they're called metal spikes, or, or leather spikes. Coming off of the leather spikes are some well-insulated wires that come up, round over his shoulder, and <laughs> down to a disposable camera on his hip. When it's action time, Vlad just needs to push the energize button on the flash unit and he's ready to go. So here's the part that I'm not so excited about. We're going to demonstrate the stun glove. And uh, you know, you know, we want to be cautious about this. We want to be careful. And uh, I'm just going to take a moment here to, to get ready. And uh, yeah, I'm not terribly excited about ah! <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> thank you very much. You, you can Any go time. now. <laughs> uh, so that actually really hurt. Uh, now we'll uh, take you into uh, another room and we'll show you how this is constructed. I have right here the stun glove that we used in the other room. And as you can see, it has two studs on the outside of it. Just to give you an example of, if you thought that this maybe wasn't a uh, real thing, here's a regular kitchen knife. I'm going to touch it against both studs here. I don't know if you can see that. Let's go to a closer view. So as you can see, it actually does produce some you know, pretty good sparks. And I will attest to the fact that it really does hurt. When you get hit with it, it actually left some marks on my arm. Pretty much what we have are leather spikes. I screwed up in the other room and I called them metal spikes, but uh, the joke was supposed to be that I was searching for leather studs on the internet until I figured out that they were leather spikes. But you can't help that kind of stuff when you're nervous about Vlad being in the room. You kind of flub things. So let's take some other gloves and make a stun glove out of them. I'm going to do this with some green gloves just because I figure they're a little bit easier to see than Hackaday Black. These are rubberized gloves and that's to protect us from the high voltage that will be contained in the glove. Decide which hand you have or you want to use. And we'll take the other glove, we're going to cut a strip out of it. You want to make sure that this strip is wide enough that the leather spikes can't ever curl and touch each other. Just to keep the corners from ever rolling up, I'm going to round them off. Now we're going to poke some holes in the material so that we can pass our leather studs or our leather spikes through them. Here is one of the leather spikes. As you can see, we've got a cone-shaped piece and a screw, and they just thread together like that. 
going to pass the screw through the material and loosely thread on the spike. Do the same for the other one. So now we have a flap with two spikes on it. Next I'm going to take my cable and strip maybe half inch off of it. Now we're ready to attach the wire to the metal spike. I'm going to take it and lay it on either side of the, the screw here. And I'm going to twist the ends and finally tighten it up. We'll just do that for the other one and then we'll continue on. Alternately, what you could do is use a crimp terminal like this one here. I now have both studs attached to the wires. What I'm going to do now is figure out how long of a wire I need to get to my hip holster. So what I'm going to do is just hold this in my hand, measure up my shoulder, and down to my hip, leaving a little bit extra for wiggle room. And we're ready to attach this to the glove. What I'm going to do is use a glue called E6000, as you can see on the, the close-up here. E6000 is one of my favorite glues. I, I tend to use it for almost everything. For most things, it's pretty good glue. It takes a while to set up, so don't expect it to harden up quickly like epoxy. We're going to take some E6000 and liberally put it all over the back of this patch that we made. Try to get lots around the wires to help hold them in and around your edges. Now place this onto the glove right above the fingers, making sure to get your, your wires oriented as you'd like them because once the glue dries, you're stuck. Now when I made the other glove, I, I used some tape to hold this in place as it was, as it was drying. So I'll just do that now. What I do is take this tape off after couple of hours when the outside glue has dried. Now we're going to work on the business end of the stun glove. What I have here is a disposable camera that I bought from the drugstore. It doesn't have to be a disposable camera. If you have an unused regular camera, that'll work just as well, as long as it has a flash. First thing I'll do is peel off the labels so that I can get at the, the releases. Now we have the releases exposed, and as you can see on the close-up camera, it's pretty easy. I can just take a screwdriver and pry them so that it opens up. There we go. Okay. Now, the very first thing that we will do once we get it open, is remove this battery right here. It's just a regular old AA battery. And what this does is keep us from shocking ourselves while we're working on it. Just take this film and get rid of it. And we're going to pull the electronics out. So now what we have is we have the exposed circuit board with the flash. We're going to be working with this capacitor right here. Our leads will go across the two terminals. But before we go any farther, I'm just going to short across these terminals in case there is some sort of charge still in the camera. In this case, there was not. So now it's safe to work with this. So now I'm going to attach my wire to the leads of the capacitor. This one and this one right here. Before I do that, I'm going to use my Dremel tool to cut a small hole for the wires to come out of, out of from the front of the camera. Now we're ready to solder. I'm going to put some solder on the leads of the wire just to get it started. I'm going to make sure it wicks in through everything. You want to make sure that you have a good solder joint between the terminals and your wire. Just give them a light tug. If you don't, they'll pull right back off. 
Now, I'm just going to fit everything back together again. I want to make sure to put our battery back in. You'll probably hear the flash charge when you do that, so beware. Yep, I can hear that charging. It is now live, so be careful. There we go. And this, this stun glove, assuming the glue is dry, is ready to go. There you go. So just so you guys can see, here's the knife I've been using to discharge the stun gloves to make the sparks. It's actually blowing small bits of the knife away each time I discharge it. There is some power here, so be careful. So there you go. This is Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com with the stun glove.